In this video, I want to talk about the Fisher XLS snowplow. Right now it's October and I feel like it's the perfect time to talk about snowplows. If you're getting ready to make a big purchase or um, you're interested in one of these plows, now is the time that a lot of people are looking at making that move. And me in particular, I came from a Western plow to try Fisher. Uh, I was using the whiteout. I love the whiteout. But when the stainless steel came out in the Fisher, I really wanted to pair the stainless steel with the silver truck. Uh, and I want to talk about some of the things I've noticed switching from Western to Fisher. Even though they're very similar plows, they have a lot of key differences that actually make them perform differently from each other. So this is a Fisher XLS. It was new for last year, expanding wing plow very similar to the western wideout and this is the generation two the second generation and one thing to consider uh if you want to upgrade from the first original generation to the next generation keep in mind that there were some issues that needed to be worked out with the new ones whereas the old ones were pretty much bulletproof uh, by the time they changed the design one thing a lot of people noticed is the wings on the newer ones seem to get a little bit loose uh, mine seem to be okay but um, they did seem to be uh, getting loose um, that's something to consider and also switching from Western to Fisher the differences uh, that you will notice is the Fisher does not stack the same as the Western the Fisher wants to go through the snow pile versus the western which wants to ride up the snow pile and that could be a pro or a con depending on what situation you are in uh, for me i liked how the western rolled up the pile because it made stacking snow a lot more natural a lot, a lot easier uh, in my opinion whereas on this it feels like when you're stacking snow you're relying on the speed of the hydraulics which is not always up to par with uh, the speed that you're trying to stack snow whereas when you're riding into the pile you know you give it the upward motion just enough and it will continue to ride up the pile which is really nice the fisher does not tend to ride up the pile quite as much as the western did and i don't know exactly why but i think it has to do with the trip blade versus the trip edge the fisher has trip edge and the uh western has a full moldboard trip uh blade so that's one thing I noticed right away. Another thing I noticed is the Fisher does not stack as high as the Western because of the way this pump is oriented. Your chains will contact this pump. So when this goes up, they actually include stacking stops. These stops here are actually in place just to stop the plow from going too high where it will contact your pump motor and it will also hit your handle. As you can see, my handle was hit from here to here cause a little scratch in the powder coating so that's one thing to look out for as well uh, I covered my hoses on this side at least with uh, with radiator holes and zip ties to help prevent any chafing that could potentially happen there and uh, this one has rubber right here but I'm probably gonna go ahead and cover up the whole thing as well and it's not necessarily the most beautiful thing in the world but it does prevent any rubbing from happening and uh, that's one of the main points where contact is made there also looks to be a little bit of a spot here where contact might be made uh, but overall maybe over here but the hoses seem to still be in good con condition uh, another thing uh, the trip blade is nice uh, if you're doing a lot of long driveways then the trip blade comes in really nice because if you're doing roadways and a lot of wind rowing, it's really like the Cadillac of all plows because you don't feel any movement like with the blade. If it hits something, it snaps real hard and pops back. It makes the whole cab of the truck rattle. Whereas this, you just don't feel anything inside of the cab if you're doing a long street or a lot of like maybe apartment complexes with long runways or roadways. You know, this thing is a lot quieter because less mass is moving when you hit an obstacle, just the blade just a blade move so if you're doing a lot of uh higher speed plowing of wind, ro wind rowing and things like that this trip edge is really nice uh one thing that does happen which is kind of weird is if you're hitting a big enough obstacle the whole plow wants to jump into the air 
and it'll actually hit the bump stops it's kind of strange so while it doesn't stack as good as the western if you hit something the whole blade because of the trip edge will jump into the air and it goes pretty high it's pretty interesting if you're plowing you hit a big enough obstacle the plow just pops up all the way up to the bump stops and goes back down it doesn't seem to hurt anything but just kind of a interesting thing it'll drop the whole load of snow if it does that but uh another thing you know the fisher has different along with having a trip edge it has different markers here which seem to be a little bit more premium than what was on the western and it also has curb guards down here which is really nice and if you have a western it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and just order these and drill through your your uh your your blade and put these here because these are really really nice they come in handy it'd be hard to drill through your blade because it has a recessed uh situation back there but uh, these are really nice because then you could kind of rub up against curbs and parking in parking lots and things like that And you don't have to worry about killing your urethane uh, Blade so those are nice to have uh, The hookup on the Fisher is not as nice as the wide out at all. It's harder to line up It's a lot more work. You got to push on the headgear the headgear is heavy and what I found is it's easiest to stand in front of the blade and push back on the headgear like this until the pins engage and you really got to make sure that both pins engage and it's not impossible to mess that up you know if you're used to a different system you know you can hear one pin pop in and then the other one might not and you might think you're good but you might not be another thing I did is I put a st stacking on the stacking stops I installed a rubber holes here as you see this one's starting to get torn this one is torn but so I'm gonna go ahead and replace these but these cut into the a-frame quite a bit so um, these are torn now but I'm gonna replace these maybe double it up because it really cuts into the frame here so hopefully you know that'll help we'll see how it goes but they seem to last a good while but there's a lot of pressure on these uh, from this hydraulic ram so that's pretty interesting you know all in all is it better than the Western It's really not better in any way uh, any particular I mean there's a aside from the trip blade being able to you know go down long runways better that's really it the looks are good if you got you know like the silver truck paired with the stainless steel plow when it's cleaned up it looks really sharp going down the road it's a big head turner you know we're I'm probably gonna go ahead and let her this truck up this year and that's really going to be a huge uh, advantage looking so clean compared to the other companies. I mean, this is a really good look and a lot of uh, people, you know, this is a this is rare, you know, on the road. So that is a plus. I mean, at the end of the day, the plow is reliable and it hasn't let me down at all. But the Western was a little bit more practical. Let's see if we can lift this blade up off of the ground here. So this truck actually has uh, dual batteries, so hopefully I can lift this up without turning on the truck. So that's the benefits of having dual batteries. So you can do some things without completely turning on the vehicle. So let's just look at these springs here. And when I bought this plow, the dealer told me that these springs should last the life of the plow and he's never had to change one hopefully that is true uh, some of my maintenance could have been a little better I just kind of sprayed it down with some WD-40 and whatnot to uh, keep the rust off but it was stored outside one thing I wasn't thrilled about is the fact that everything is stainless steel but the hardware if you look at the washers you have a stainless steel screw a stainless steel bolt but somehow the washers are regular steel and they're rusting and staining the stainless steel up top a little bit and there's running down and causing issues and they're pretty much corroding away I've sprayed them now with oil after I noticed that they were rusting but as you see it's still you know rusting out pretty bad so I don't understand how I ended up with with hardware that's not stainless steel for a plow that is totally supposed to be stainless steel so that was kind of not cool 
Uh, other than that, the plow was pretty good. I think there's supposed to be some kind of a padding here that goes here like a clear tape. It doesn't seem to be on this plow, so I don't know if it got, ever got installed correctly. Probably not. There were some issues with the install, but we are beyond that. Looks like this come come loose. That's not good. Oh, that's just the that's just for the spring. The spring return. It pulls the pulls the uh, hydraulic cylinder down, which is interesting. I don't know the reasoning for that or why you want your hydraulic cylinder to go back down all the way. It seems like it would cause more time delay for the cylinder because it pulls it down when it's in storage or when you're floating when you go into full float it really floats the cylinder all the way down maybe that's beneficial so if you go down and approach if it's a locking cylinder I don't know but it does do that it does bring the cylinder down uh, I guess yeah I'm not sure why why I would do that maybe because the Western doesn't have that feature so like I say, uh, the chain will hit the pump housing if you go all the way up. Right here, they leave about uh, half an inch or so of space between it with the stop, with the stopping, stacking stoppers. But uh, also, when the blade swings all the way over with this handle. Swing it all the way over all the way up when the blade swings all the way over and all the way up it gets real close to uh, your hose here uh, and it gets real close to your handle so without the stacking stops this plow will go up higher but it would definitely hit your handle which we did and that was an uh, issue with the install from the factory from the from the dealer the dealer did not install the stacking stops or said they didn't get any stacking stops and they never got installed and it ended up being a problem because I ended up hitting this and hitting my pump and I was really upset that I was hitting the pump with the chain and all that pressure and driving down the road and actually having all that pressure on my pump but at the end of the day it never had an issue so I mean, there was a couple times where the uh, the pump seemed like it was running slow. But I don't know if it was just in my head or what. But essentially, right behind this, I'll probably have to lower it to show you this. But show you what's going on right behind that cover where all that pressure was building up from the... Uh, all the pressure was building up from the chain. As you see, it pulls it down, continues to pull it down. It's like a little bit of oil leakage there. So all that pressure from the chain was essentially slamming into this module. So that is not the best situation. Uh, the, everything still works, but as you see here, it was hitting right where that sign is. You can see the mark right there. So that would have been right by the C. And it doesn't look like anything got broken. Uh, the actual pump is solid aluminum, but this module right here is right there, right on the front. But it still works. This looks bent, but that's just um, on the very top there. I don't know if that would have even been possible from what it was doing but uh seems to be in okay shape even though the chain made that connection that contact so it is what it is now at this point what can you do you know but you know that's it for the video thank you for watching and comment below what you think do you think the fisher xls is a good plow it uh, seems a little like this ram is leaking a little bit here from this seal. That may be normal, but these other ones seem to be pretty good. We'll see uh, what happens. We'll get it all checked out at the dealer. 
So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day and hope to hear from you soon. Comment below. Thanks a lot. Bye.